Hi, my name is Barbara Collins and I'm the administrative assistant with the NRF Foundation team. And I'm so excited to be able to speak with Michelle today. I mean, thank you so much for being a part of the Be an Innovator Submit. Um, so we're gonna get, we're gonna jump right into the questions. So when I think about a career, I think about the people, you know, people often get to where they are in so many ways, sometimes planned and sometimes unplanned. Can you start today by sharing a bit about your career journey and any pivotal moment that helped guide you where you are today? Sure, and I'm happy to be here. So thank you for inviting me. Um, I think my career has been a series of opportunities disguised as the exact thing I didn't want to do at the time. Um, I've had a lot of unexpected moments that have weaved together into a really cool mosaic, even if I didn't always see how those pieces were going to fit together before. Um, so first, I started off as a French major. Um, that was because I loved it and I was really good at it, even though I had no idea like what I would do, how I would get a job. My mom thought it was ridiculous. Um, and I got an internship um, during college in HR because they needed someone who could translate faxes. So it was a French company and they needed someone who could translate faxes because yes, there were faxes. Um, and, and that really started my career in HR. And then early on, um, you know, I supported a team that didn't have global coverage. Uh, my leader asked if I could do the London market, which is not what I wanted to do at the time. Um, but then I ended up living and working in London for a few years. And so, you know, you never know exactly where your career is going to go. And, and I think one of the keys is to, to be open to the process along the way um, and to make sure that you're taking chances. I actually took an opportunity to move from HR where I was having a really great career and move into our marketing department. And I got to work on some of the most influential work that Amex has done for business owners over the last 15 years, including Saturday. And so these, these moves have also helped me create career long relationships, which I also think is um, a really important part of the process. And so, you know, I like to tell people be open to where the process leads, um, even if you have in your mind exactly where you want to go um, and, and collect things along the way, collect experiences and collect relationships um, that will help you to continue to evolve. Yes, I agree. Um, and when you think about a career, you think about all the years of experience and life lessons. So would you share with us a challenge you faced along the way, how you overcame the challenge and what you learned? Yeah, so, um, so remember I said collect these relationships, right? They're really important. So uh, what I will tell you is that I have had um, two leaders that literally hated me, like would have fired me if they could have hated me. Um, and how I handled each of those situations was a direct correlation to the networks that I really surrounded myself with at those companies. And in the first instance, I didn't have a strong trusted network. Um, it was just kind of, you know, me, the little team that I surrounded myself with and my leader. Um, and so I didn't feel like I had anyone to go to even just to talk about what was happening. Um, and that made me feel really alone and it made me just opt out, right? I was just like, I'm out, I'm leaving. Um, and for the other, I had built a strong network around me and, and I had multiple resources to go to who helped me navigate the situation. Um, you know, I was able to overcome that situation by actively facing it, um, eventually winning that leader over um, and, and, and kind of doing what I needed to do in that situation instead of running from it. Um, and a couple things I learned first, don't count yourself out until others do, right? So sometimes you might need to go around that mountain, you might need to go over it, you might need to go under it. Um, you know, you need to build relationships with others around you, sometimes a peer, sometimes a skip level leader, as we call it. Um, make sure that others see you and care about you enough to be able to want to support you um, to kind of get to where you're going. Um, as I mentioned in that second instance, I won that leader over and still stay in touch with that leader now, even though we don't work at the same company. Um, you know, sometimes it's others, sometimes it's you, sometimes it's, you know, kind of both in the middle, um, you know, making sure you dig down and figuring out, you know, when's the right time to kind of hunker down and continue this road and when's the right time to just fold it and, and move on for another day is, um, is really important, but you don't know how you're going to face that until you're in it. And so just, again, think about those relationships that you have and who you can, um, who you can go to when you, when you need support. 
Yes, and I love that you touched on um, your network um, and the relationships um, and having support is so important in your life's journey. Um, so what so what role did mentorship play in your career? And is there anyone in particular that you can tell us about? Yeah, mentorship is incredibly important and, and don't confuse that with sponsorship there, right? We hear some of those words used interchangeably. Um, you know, mentorship doesn't always lead to the next big role but it usually does lead to the next big revelation about yourself or about a situation. Um, my mentors have come in all sorts of packages. So that's another thing. Don't think that it's only gonna be someone really senior to you. You know, I've had, you know, EVPs and presidents of businesses to admins and dear friends and various peers along the way in between. Um, you have to be willing to show your true self and be willing to have the mirror held up to you and to by another. And that's that's really hard, right? That's been the best part of these relationships, but it's also the hardest part. So, you know, these aren't the people that you're looking to impress or you're looking to kind of showcase your best self. These are the people that like you reveal yourselves to, right? And they are the ones who um, help you see that in a different way. And, and they might make you see it in the way that you didn't even wanna see, right? Literally an admin, who a friend of mine who said, I mean, I'm just saying, like, this is what I see. If you don't want to do it, just say you don't want to do it. And I was like, well, dang, you know, just that harshly. But she was right. Um, you know, I just wasn't trying to see that situation for what it was. And I wasn't trying to do my part. And so, um, you know, that mentorship relationship is, is special. It's important. Um, and it's, you know, one that when you do it right, um, will benefit you and the other person as well. Yes. And you have quite an impressive background, to say the least, as I spoke to when we started our chat. So do you consider yourself an ambitious woman? So I'm absolutely ambitious um, and I always have been. And so I, I think I was ambitious when it wasn't always the in vogue thing to do and when the descriptors weren't always so positive. Um, now we see being ambitious as a positive thing that wasn't always the case. Um, but I didn't care what others thought I could or couldn't do, and, and that was never going to hold me back. Um, what's new for me these days is to be equally ambitious for others, and I don't know that that's what I feel like I had um, as much as I was developing and growing in my career. Um, and so for some reason, whenever I think of mentorship, I think of those who have mentored me versus those who I mentor. Um, but through what we have at American Express called the Ambition Project, I'm much more cognizant of how I spend my time to support others. Um, I view my success in part on how successful I can help others to be. And it's great to kind of look around the organization um, and say, wow, I remember when that person was at this level. I remember when that person worked for me and see where they are now. Um, that's been really, really um, it's just been so fulfilling for me to watch how others have grown. Um, and so what I realize now, it's not enough for me just to be ambitious for myself. I have to be doing that for others and help others find their voice and find their way as well. Yes, um, and I think it's very clear that there's an entrepreneurial mindset and spirit within you. So how do you express that while working for such a large company? Yeah, so this isn't easy, always easy to do, I will say. Um, you have to be courageous in an environment that's not necessarily designed to encourage risk taking, right? When you live in, in, and work in big companies, um, you know, they've done things for certain ways for a certain number of years because some of that has worked. And so it's hard um, to, to get people to change their minds sometimes, but I am the self-proclaimed queen of whatever area I look after. And so if, you know, if I have the ability to impact in that area, that's what I'm going to do, um, you know, so don't be afraid that something you're going to do might feel like it's on a small scale or it's not having the impact that you want, um, because just wait, you never know when something you do is going to be leveraged by others later. And that's and that's kind of been one of the hallmarks of my career. Um, I will start something small and I will let it organically grow um, and then I'll let others notice it and decide to take that and have it be something that becomes bigger. And so, you know, it, it, you just have to have the courage to say, Here's something I want to work on. Here's something that's important. Here's something I believe in. Um, and, you know, and you never get in trouble for doing it small, for starting it small as a little pilot or just a test, as we like to say at work. Um, and, and then people will eventually see it. And, and, and then that becomes, that allows, you know, part of you to shine through. Yes, I love the saying, start small. Um, so we're going to switch our focus just a little to talk about DNI. 
as we're going through a time where there's a great awakening for the need of diversity and inclusion efforts in any work setting. So what roles can companies of any size be taking to empower more people of color, especially women of color to advance into leadership positions? Yeah, I have to say we have to empower ourselves, right? If this time period has taught us nothing, it's that we can't wait for anyone to wait to give us anything at all, right? It's our time to claim whatever that space may be that you want to be in. Um, and so now's the time to be bold. Um, people are looking for diverse talent like never before. They're looking for ideas like never before and, and they're seeing it as well. And that's what's been so great and so fulfilling. And so if you feel like you haven't been seen before, um, pick your head up and throw your shoulders back and your chest out. Now is the time to be seen. And we can't wait for anyone to give it to us. We can't wait for organizations to share that space with us. Um, we need to just kind of go in and make sure that we're, we're being heard. And, and so some of the things that Amex is doing, um, a variety of things. We're, you know, we're setting new goals for you know, how many women and how many underrepresented minorities we wanna have in our organization. And as a result, we're enhancing our recruitment, our training, our promotion efforts. Um, and most importantly, we're making those moves happen, right? Since the summer, we've added another black man to our board of directors. We've added a black woman and a Hispanic man to our executive committee who report into the CEO. Um, and we've made numerous senior level hires and appointments. And so we're actually doing those visible things as well. And I think that has mattered for me to continue to see the organization um, to do that. Some might say that it, you know, it took long enough yeah, maybe, but it's happening now. And that's what gives me, that's what gives me joy. Yes. Um, and how does an inclusive culture at work support and champion the success of an individual and the success of the company itself? You know, one of the things I always say is that being inclusive doesn't just help those who are underrepresented, right? So not every program is going to be directed you know, for Michelle, this Black woman in corporate America, um, but sometimes just more consistent and fair processes will help all of our colleagues to rise together. And so one of the things that I love to share about the message of IND is that being inclusive and encouraging belonging, it helps all boats rise um, and that's great for everyone, right? And so I feel like that's a message that I wanna make sure that people know is that it's, you know, being inclusive doesn't have to exclude anyone. It just helps all of us get, get better together. I mean, we have an audience today of bright, talented, and ambitious young women who are about to start their own career journey. What are a few things as a leader you would advise them to consider as they enter the workplace? So I think the first thing that I would say is to take your whole self unapologetically from day one, right? Don't wait to show them who you are later, right? It's kind of like that relationship. Like you always want that, you know, the first date to be this best version of you. It needs to be the real view, real you, right? Like I told my husband date one, I don't cook. So 20 years in, he ain't looking for a meal to be cooked by me because that's ridiculous. It's not who I am. It's not who I'm ever gonna be. You need to do the same at work, right? If they're not gonna celebrate you and love you for who you are, you don't belong there. Um, and so don't be afraid to use your voice and share your thoughts all to make a really big impact. Um, I feel like I waited too long to be able to feel like I could just be me at work and just that and say, if you didn't like it, then that was just too bad. Um, and, and I'm there now and I'm doing okay. And so the one thing I would say is do that from day one, just always be you. And before we end, I would like to give the floor to you to, to close out with a parting message. Is there any advice that someone gave to you in your early career stage that stuck with you that you would like to pass along with, with us today? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes along with, with what I just said. And I think my best and worst piece of advice were the same, came from the same person. So someone once told me that I needed to develop a poker face. I wear everything on my sleeve, by the way. And I responded that I thought it was easier for someone not to be stupid than for me not to have to look at them as though they weren't, <laughs> right? I was like, why is that my problem? Um, and it was at that moment that I decided that I was either going to be myself or not. And it was either going to be at that company or not. And I think that was the moment that I said, I'm just going to be me. And so I think that that's the piece that, you know, has really kind of, it was, it was advice um, in good and bad ways that helped me also to realize who I was, which was, I'm just going to be me um, and bring the best version of me I can bring every day um, and see what happens. And so th that would be the thing that I would want to, to share. 
Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. And I really enjoyed our chat.